Mic check, 212, bitch. What's up, guys? It's DDP, back with another edition, the last regular season edition, mind you, of the Big 12 Football Roundup. Now, kicking things off here, we're going to dive straight into number six, Oklahoma, versus number 13, West Virginia. This is Oklahoma going to Morgantown. Great matchup. This was my Big 12 favorite against my Big 12 dark horse. The winner would go on to face Texas in the Big 12 championship game this coming Saturday. So if you watched last week's edition of this show, you already knew what I said, which was defense wasn't even optional in this game. It was going to be non-existent. Well, turns out not so much. In fact, the game was effectively decided on two massive defensive plays by Oklahoma. Hey, say what you will. Yeah, they gave up 56 points, but you know what? They also gave you 14, so you can't write them off. So here's how the game shakes up. Oklahoma wins 59-56. to Kyler Murray goes for 364 yards and three touchdowns. Yes, one interception as well. He also runs it for another touchdown here. Let me see here. Kyler Murray, 9 for 114 in a touchdown on the ground. Kyler Murray was a man on a mission, and he got the Offensive Player of the Week yet again in the Big 12 for his effort. Will Greer, meanwhile, lit up the Sooners' defense, as I said he would, throwing for 539 yards, four touchdowns, and no picks. However, Will Greer also made who blunder plays that cost his team a chance to play for the Big 12 championship for the first time since becoming a part of the Big 12 what like seven years ago I don't have the exact date off the top of my head but let's flash forward here uh, into the game Oklahoma wins this game because of Will Greer's blunders there were a lot of back and forth ticky tack calls a couple controversial calls I know as well uh, West Virginia fans feel all kinds of ways about it but I think for the most part, they generally cancel themselves out or at the very least, some of the flags that West Virginia got. You might be mad about the call and it might not be a common call, but you should also take a look at your player and what he was doing. Uh, one drive in particular, West Virginia gets all the way down to the five yard line, inside the five yard line on a fantastic run by, I believe it was McCoy. But the play is called back because at about the 30-yard line, the West Virginia wide receiver blocks the OU player 20 yards off the field and basically into the bench, into all kinds of chaos, and he won't let up. And so eventually the official's like, well, that's something. I don't know what I, I mean. That's, that's a penalty. It's unsportsmanlike conduct, effectively, and that's what he called. So it's a spot foul 15 yards back. So instead of being inside the five, you find yourselves there, and then it's like, if not the next play, like two plays later, you have the second blunder by Greer. Before I say exactly what happened on that, let me explain the other one. Will Greer uh, gets blown up early in the game by, who was it for OU? Caleb Kelly. Basically drops back, goes to throw, and never sees Caleb coming. Caleb gets the sack, punches the ball out disengages from the sack fumble, picks up the ball, and rumbles in 10 yards for the score. That is a complete play by Caleb Kelly. That's just Caleb Kelly by himself destroying West Virginia. The second one that I referenced a moment ago here is even more crucial because what effectively happens here, uh, the ball is placed at the West Virginia 48. Uh, same thing happens. Effectively, you have Will Greer getting wrapped up in a sack, but he's not down yet. He's being dragged down, and he decides he's going to try and throw it. I don't know if his thinking is to throw it away or just throw it downfield, but it's only second down, and as he's trying to throw the ball, he gets popped in the back, ball up in the air, clear fumble. Oklahoma picks up the ball from the scramble. Curtis Bolton rumbles 48 yards back for another score. So Will Greer, as masterful as he was on the day throwing the ball, he also had some inexcusable blunders that cost his team. Speaking of blunders, Oklahoma squandered a 14-point lead in the first half, and then late in the game with a 10-point lead after that 48-yard touchdown return, pretty much managed to do it again because they had two chances to end a drive. They had a costly, unnecessary penalty on 4th and 10 that was thrown incomplete. Receiver never saw the ball, but the OU defender 
had an arm bar up, and basically they determined that, yeah, he didn't get his head back around, so even though the receiver never saw the ball, we're going to throw a flag here. Okay, drive continues. A couple plays later, uh, West Virginia throwing deep. Freshman safety in the game for OU drops an easy pick. And, you know, West Virginia then a couple plays later scores, and you see that guy, that kid that drops the pick on the OU bench inconsolable. Uh, I'm not pretty much just, you know, hurting because he felt like he left his or let his team down. Understandable, but you got to remember some of these some of these guys are just kids. They're 18, 19 years old. They understand what's on the line, and he felt like he had cost his team a chance, especially with how the defense was playing. There wasn't a lot of confidence that OU was going to hold on to it even then. But nevertheless, OU manages to recover the onside kick and then get the crucial first down from Kyler to C.D. Lamb to ice the game. Uh, other standout performers in this game, Kennedy Brooks, 21 carries, 182 yards and a touchdown with a long of 68. Uh, you also have Hollywood Brown, Marquise Hollywood Brown, 11 catches, 243 yards and two touchdowns. That dude is unreal. Like, Hollywood is unreal. I know his cousin Antonio Brown was in attendance for the game. Dude, dude is phenomenal. Like, he is the ultimate X factor, and if he chooses to come back next year for Oklahoma, he was a JUCO transfer, so he doesn't have to. But if he does come back and you have him and CeeDee Lamb one more time, with Kyler's gone essentially at this point, but maybe you have uh, Spencer Rattler or you know, Austin Kendall in there. OU has a chance to be another heavy, heavy favorite, not only to win the Big 12 again next year. Again, I'm not getting ahead of myself for this year. They're in the game now, but we have to see what happens. But at the very least, in the discussion for um, a chance to win again next year and the playoffs, potentially. C.D. Lamb also goes 5-53. Again, has the crucial catch on 4th and 5, I believe it was to ice the game, prevent West Virginia from getting the ball back. And this was just, this was incredible. Uh, West Virginia standouts. McCoy goes 16 for 81 in a touchdown. Again, he had a lot more than 81 yards. He had 30 plus yards called back on that one blunderous play. Uh, just completely obliterated a much better run from him. Petaway also had 15 for 76. Uh, receiving. I said receivers were gonna give OU problems and they did. OU secondary is horrifically bad. Bookie got just torched. Uh, Jennings Jr. goes seven catches, 225 yards, and two touchdowns, including a long of 75. That was including a third and 18 conversion down inside the five. Just horrifically bad work from the secondary for OU. Sills added another eight for 131 and two scores. And then Maiden gave you three for 52. So pretty much anything West Virginia wanted throwing the ball, they got. And it was only the couple times OU's defensive front was able to get there that they were able to blow things up and make a huge play that ultimately decided the game so hey credit where credit's due man uh ou went in got a very hard-earned win west virginia beat texas and austin so say what you will this is a quality team even if the ou defense and even if the west virginia defense aren't all that special it's a team that beat texas and austin so it can't be ignored Speaking of Austin, well, rather, Texas, let's take a look at number, what are they now, nine? They were 14 in the game, but I think now they're nine. Number 14, Texas, at Kansas. Last time Texas was at Kansas, they lost. Just a fun fact. And it almost repeated itself, potentially, here in this game, because Texas gets up big in this game. Texas goes into the fourth quarter up, what is it, 21 nothing and then gets outscored 17 to three in the final frame, has to recover an onside kick to hold off a sudden uh, resurgence from the Jayhawks here. Ellinger go, goes in, you know, steady hand as always. 154 yards, two touchdowns, but two picks. For a guy that had only thrown a couple picks on the year, that's highly unusual. I do wonder a little bit if his shoulder is all right. That's going to be a huge storyline uh, on the Texas side of things in next Saturday's Big 12 Championship game between Oklahoma and Texas. By the way, another fun fact about that, this is the first time since before Oklahoma was even a state that Oklahoma and Texas faced off more than once in a season. I previously said it had never happened. I was only looking back to statehood. Silly me. Uh, for Kansas, 
the key player, Williams Jr., running back, 103 yards and a touchdown. Bender for the quarterback for Kansas goes 18 of 35, 159, one and one. Not bad, not bad. Uh, running the ball, Ingram, or sorry, Watson, 14 for 79, Ingram, 13 for 51. So pretty solid there. That's for Texas. Uh, for Kansas, their running backs, I said already Williams Jr., and then you had D. Williams going 10 for 37. Texas's receivers did not have a big day. Duvernay, 3 for 47. Johnson, 4 for 38. Humphrey, 2 for 25. Those three torched OU previously. I'm sure they're likely to do so again. I don't know how confident I am in OU. All I can say at this point is their mantra has pretty much become, we dare you to outscore us. And Texas did that before, 48-45, but uh, can you do it twice? That's going to be the question. And if Kyler Murray can avoid those two or three costly critical mistakes he made in the Red River rivalry matchup, OU's going to be damn tough to beat because this OU team looks like they can hang at least 40 on anybody. Now, granted, they're giving up about 40. So it's now five straight weeks they've given up at least 40 points and the only team in NCAA history to give up 40 plus points in five straight weeks and be 5-0 and in the process. So they're going to have to hope that they can win a shootout because their defense isn't going to stop a runny nose, let alone a very talented Texas team. So Texas wins this game 24-17. Elsewhere, I'm not going to go through box scores on this. I'm just going to give you the quick rundown from here. You also had Baylor beating Texas Tech 35-24, resulting in Tech missing a bowl game, ending 5-7. Yes, they were without for the last few weeks. Uh, Bowman, that completely derailed things for them, and now it's cost them their coach. Cliff Kingsbury has been fired, and it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. He could very well be uh, head coach elsewhere. Or maybe he goes to the NFL as an offensive coordinator with all this new age stuff and his, you know, you can say what you want about if you consider Baker one of his guys, but he's worked with a lot of NFL talented players now. Uh, he had worked with Manziel previously, obviously, he, you know, I mentioned Baker, he has, um, you know, in the MVP race, he has Mahomes now. Uh, I mean, the, the guy's worked with a lot of talented players and that, that'll probably get him a job, especially with now the new age offensive explosion in the NFL as they more and more embrace the college game. I think he will be in surprisingly high demand, despite never having more than eight wins in a season, and that's if you count a bowl win. Uh, also, you have Iowa State surviving Kansas State 42-38 in Ames. Surprisingly high-scoring game for two fairly stout defenses. Iowa State ends up 7-4, and four. again, one fewer game than the rest of the conference. And then you have TCU beating Oklahoma State 31-24. Oklahoma State, man, they nearly beat OU, and they did beat Texas, but uh, not much else went right for them beyond that. Losses, I believe, to Baylor, uh, Oklahoma, and TCU down the stretch after upsetting Texas. That was clearly the high point of their season. So interesting to see OU versus Texas this Saturday. I think it's an early kick, which really sucks, but all the same. This is going to be an interesting, historic matchup. I'm really eager to see if Oklahoma is for real. If Oklahoma beats Texas, who I believe is number nine now, that's another highly regarded statement for them to have a chance at the playoffs, even without a defense. Because OU's offense is historically unmatched. They're the only offense ever to average. They've, they've broken the record in the regular season now for averaging more than nine point, sorry, nine yards per play. Uh, Hawaii was the previous record holder at 8.6. That was with Colt Brennan. And so th there's no denying this offense. And Kyler Murray by himself has accounted for more offense than 41 other FBS teams, including four in the top 25. So Kyler Murray, he won't win the Heisman, but there's no doubt he is more critical to OU than Tua is. But because the Big 12 has no reputation for defense, or rather a you know the opposite of that, uh, that that's what's going to hold them back and that's what's going to make people disregard the fact that in every statistical category even if you remove the fourth quarter in pretty much at that point 98% of statistical categories Kyler Murray actually beats out Tua but it is what it is if OU beats Texas they have a very very good case for the big tour or sorry for the college football playoff if Ohio State at number six fresh off beating the snot out of Michigan wins uh, 
they got to play Northwestern with four losses, so their ne next matchup isn't nearly as promising. Plus, they have that hideous Purdue loss by 20-plus points. I don't know how they can justify that one. OU lost to, again, a top-10 team in the country by three on a neutral field. But there is it, it, the OU defense is so bad that the committee might just disregard everything else and say, ah, put Ohio State in. It could very well happen. I would not be shocked if the Big 12 gets no representation at this point. But uh, the other critical thing that must happen, Alabama has to beat Georgia. Georgia rated number five. If they beat Bama, they're in. Bama's not fallen from one to five. Bama would be in the picture. So if Bama wins over Georgia, OU is at least in a head-to-head -head competition with Ohio State, who surely will handle Northwestern. And then it just comes down to debates. It's not a debate that favors OU as much as I would like, but we'll see what happens. Texas could play spoiler. Texas could beat OU for the second time this year and completely derail any notion of the Big 12 doing anything. Obviously, Texas has no shot with three losses, so it is what it is. But that's been my time for this episode, guys. I appreciate the view. I appreciate the listening ear. Uh, if this is something you guys like, I'll try and bring it out next season as well obviously i'll do an episode as well after this upcoming big 12 championship and if if uh maybe i'll do a bowl game edition as well i'll, I'll take a look at that if you guys like this let me know and uh, i'll keep it going otherwise it might potentially end up being one of those segments i discontinue after this season is over so until next time guys remember every legend was once a prospect salute <laughs>